If you're looking for a large three-door SUV in India, your choices right now are rather limited. But the new Skoda Kodiak offers you another choice in that segment. Of course, the Skoda Kodiak has already been in the Indian market, but this is the latest version. It comes with lots of toys and a brand new petrol engine. How is it to drive? How practical is it? Can you actually use all three rows? Is there any boot space after all three rows being used? We answer all your questions today. You're watching the AutoX YouTube channel. You can also get your daily dose of all things automotive on our website, autox.com, and follow us on social media. Don't forget to check out our monthly magazine and make sure to hit the bell and subscribe button so you don't miss a thing. Of course, uh, the Kodiak is offered in India in three variants, and what we are driving today is the top of the line the Lorraine and Clermont, LNK actually. And when you talk about design-wise, the Kodiak has traditional Skoda cues. The big beak-like grille stands out. The lights are rather sleek. They come with a lot of detailing. The lighting is, of course, all LED. Both the headlights, which are dynamic, and the taillights are LED. And the taillights also come with a really nice crystal effect, which gives it a very unique Skoda identity. I have to say, in this lava blue shot with these dual-tone 18-inch alloys, I think the Kodiak cuts a really imposing figure on the road. It's a rather smart looking design. It's imposing and overall I would give it about 8 out of 10 purely on design. It's an imposing figure, it catches your eye and it certainly lends more credibility to the fact that it's a big luxurious SUV. It also gets prominent Lauren and Clermont badging to tell you that you've bought the top of the line variant. And again, the proportions, the 4.7 meters of length of the Kodiak, uh, the way the wheels are spaced out, the size of the wheels, uh, the stance of the car, I think the proportions make the Kodiak look absolutely fantastic. Uh, it looks imposing, it cuts a fine figure, and you can tell that it's a big, luxurious SUV. Again, like I said, the lava blue especially adds a special flavor uh, to the design of the Kodiak. Uh, the taillights are again LED, and you can see the Skoda design touches here, all the crystal effect, all the, all the fine... Uh, Czechoslovakian design traits that they call it and uh, something that I've really started liking in uh, the Skoda design methodology the way the letters are spaced out the Kodiak is smaller overall it's a really good design a handsome car and something that cuts a really nice figure on the road but since it's a Skoda it also comes with some really good simply clever touches for instance on the driver's side you get a dedicated umbrella and a drainage slot so even if you come with a drenching umbrella you can slot it through and it will ensure that the drainage the water that is there will be drained out effectively similarly in the rear seats you get these special headrests which allow you to sleep very well they hold your neck in place while you're sleeping and i think that's a great touch other than that there are few other touches which make skoda special and i think these small touches really do add to the ownership experience of the car. Now, when it comes to the interiors of the Kodiak, um, I think the first feeling you get when you get inside the car is that it's really spacious. Of course, what works in the Kodiak's favour when the interior is concerned? In the LNK trim, we get this two-tone black and beige interior, which obviously feels a bit airier. The panoramic sunroof also helps. Uh, and the Kodiak comes really well loaded with features. I'll come to that later. But first up, I really like the dash design. It's clean. Uh, it's laid out well. It gives the whole interior a lot of space. In fact, the front seats feel really comfortable and you just feel like you're in a big living room. You get a pretty high resolution multimedia touchscreen display here. You get a virtual cockpit. You also get nine airbags as standard, which is fantastic. Skoda always talks about safety and build quality. And you can see that in the Kodiak by the bucket loads because it also comes with many active safety features other than the nine airbags and the whole build quality is of really reassuring feel. Um, you also get de rigueur what you would expect now wireless charging and uh, uh, wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto and stuff. You get three zone air conditioning. You also get a 12 speaker Canton sound system which sounds quite good. The LNK's front seats also feature uh, they're, they're electrically adjustable, they have memory function, and they're also heated and cooled. Uh, you know, but while the LNK's interior is nice, what I would really like to see, and I'm sure I'll see that sometime later, is the Sportline version of the Kodiak. It comes with all black interiors, Alcantara, and those seats in the Kodiak, which are all black, Alcantara and stuff, 
look absolutely amazing. So that's something I would like to see. I think that would be my pick of the variants among the Kodiak when the, uh, you know, when the exterior de details and the interior details, the exterior also gets black chrome. Uh, so, uh, you know, that's something I'm looking forward to. When it comes to driving, I think the biggest change here is that the Kodiak is now petrol only. It's the 2-litre four-cylinder turbocharged engine that we know from the Volkswagen range, 188 bhp, 320 Nm. Uh, in this case, it also has all-wheel drive. Uh, you also get multiple driving modes in the Kodiak. You can go individual or you can go sport, you can go into eco. You even have a dedicated off-road mode. What the Kodiak also gets is DCC, dynamic chassis control, where basically the shock absorbers have an electronic control unit with them, which can, you know, harden the shock absorber, soften it, depending on the driving mode you choose, it actively works to improve the driving appeal of the Kodiak. How does the 2-litre Kodiak drive? Well, you know, I was a little bit uh, uh, apprehensive of how the performance of the Kodiak with the petrol engine would be. I thought maybe that 320 Nm of torque would not be enough. But I have to say, the way it's been tuned, especially if you're driving it in sport mode, it actually feels quite eager. In, in the regular standard mode, I think it's a little lazy. But in sport mode, the throttle response picks up. Uh, the gearbox is sharper. It holds on to gears. And it's really engaging to drive. The steering has a decent amount of feel. And, you know, overall, you really don't feel the size of the car. At 4.7 meters, it's no small uh, uh, vehicle. But even in traffic or parking, it feels a pretty good size. Yes, the suspension is a bit too much on the stiffer side. If you get really broken roads, uh, the winter rains have not been kind to Delhi roads. On the really broken stretches, you have to slow down because the the, the bumps coming through can rattle you a bit. So yes, I think the chassis tuning, rather the suspension tuning could have been slightly softer for the Indian market, but uh, it's not a deal breaker. Efficiency wise also, I've been driving it, uh, you know, not too aggressively. Both days have been, uh, uh, I've been traveling at peak time. It's been big traffic. I'm getting close to seven and a half, eight kilometers a liter, which is not bad at all. I was expecting much worse. Uh, gearbox wise also, the gearbox works fine. I've not had to use the paddles at all. Uh, like I said, in, in sport mode, it's even more nicer and the gearbox really intuitively selects the ratio it should be in. Uh, so it ultimately boils down to this. How practical is the Kodiak? Is it actually a three-row SUV? Well, yes. Uh, yes and no. Uh, let me put it that way. Yes, it's a three-row. Yes, I could fit in the third row. But would I like to be seated there for a long time? I don't think so. If you have two young kids who need to be fitted in the third row, who, yes, I think a couple of hours, they should be fine. So the three row practicality is there. In fact, even with the third row being used, there's a decent amount of boot room available. You can fit two large soft bags easily. So that's the practicality aspect of it. Uh, when you look at it size wise, the Kodiak, you can drive every day. I don't see some of the bigger SUVs. You can feel uncomfortable driving them in India. In urban areas with the Kodiak, that's not a problem. But there's one thing for sure with the Kodiak. If you're looking for a three row SUV in the 40 lakh odd segment, which is also driver friendly, which is something you would want to drive yourself and you can still be chauffeur driven, you know, sitting in the back seat with those neck supporters is, is really, really good. It really makes a big difference. Uh, so yes, if you're looking for an SUV, that's something you can drive yourself. You'll enjoy driving, which you enjoy pushing. And yet you can be chauffeured around with the added practicality of the third row. The Kodiak makes a lot of sense. The two major compromises being one, the ride quality can be on the stiffer side. Two, it'll never be as fuel efficient as the diesel version of the Kodiak. But with India going more and more towards petrol, I think that's going to be something people will adjust to. And at 35 lakhs X showroom where the Kodiak starts, I think that's not a bad price. And it's a really competitive vehicle in its segment easily probably the best driver's car in the segment it's something i would prefer over most uh, frame over ladder suvs you know those suvs really are not very good when it comes to driving appeal or the right quality and in that aspect the kodiak definitely trumps the competition hopefully very soon we'll get you a comparison of its direct rivals but for now if you're okay with petrol the kodiak is a strong bet for a three-row suv in this price segment